TVE Energy, a renowned battery manufacturer in China, has come into partnership with American automaker Aptera Motors to supply lithium-ion battery cells for the automaker's lofty solar EV ventures. The deal will see EVE deliver the Santiago produced 21700 NMC811 cylindrical cells for Aptera's SEV. The 21700 NMC811 battery cells are so far among the lightest and the most energy dense battery packs on the market yet, and their adoption in the Aptera SEV aligns with their lightweight, efficiency first operandi claimed with the vehicle. The NMC811 battery cell is not a new type of battery per se, but simply a better version of what is already available on the market. Going by the various quantity ratios of nickel, cobalt and manganese used in the battery cathode, the foundation for the nickel manganese cobalt oxide or NMC battery is made up of the common lithium battery components. It is further separated into types 111, 523, 622, 811 and so on. The cathode of the 811 is made up of 80% nickel, 10% cobalt, and 10% manganese in the ratio of 8 is to 1 is to 1, hence the name. NMC cathodes have been around for nearly 20 years with different nickel manganese cobalt compositions. In fact, many of the significant publications and patents arriving about nickel manganese cobalt oxide arrived in the middle of the 2000s. As a result of the early commercial success of the NMC 111, composed of one third nickel, one third manganese, and one third cobalt, also known as the NMC 333, NMC cathodes have become more well known. The BMW i3, the Chevy Bolt and new Nissan Leaf all utilize this battery as well as the Tesla Powerwall. Now, as the nickel concentration of each generation of cathodes has continually increased, the industry has been advancing NMC technology. More variants like the NMC 433, the NMC 532, or the most recent NMC 622 have been hitting the market and it's for good reason that their popularity has grown in recent years. Since the cells are lighter and have a greater capacity, the battery packs can store more energy and have a longer driving range. The high energy density of the NMC 811 is by far one of its most significant features and coupled with its relative lightweight makes it a more favorable battery option in EVs. Such high energy density of about 275 kilowatt hours per kilogram is brought on by the high nickel content in the cathode which can increase material activity and hence energy density. The high nickel content is also essential for increasing capacity. The material's laminar structure is strengthened and its discharge capacity is increased by cobalt, which is another active component in the cathode. When charging and discharging, the electrode supporting manganese component aids in stability. Now, Lithium Nickel Cobalt Aluminium Oxide or NCA is another type of battery closely related to NMC. In fact, NCA has such high nickel content in its cathode that it is sometimes considered equivalent to NMC 811. NCA cathodes are often doped with aluminium rather than manganese and comprises 80% nickel and 15% cobalt by weight. That's a similar nickel composition to the NMC 811 battery. But back to the NMC 811 battery, just how energy dense and efficient is it really? Well, in discussing the energy density and capacity of the NMC 811, the key component in the cathode to highlight is nickel. High nickel concentration is crucial for capacity improvements. As a result of its 80% nickel content, the 811 has a capacity of around 200 mAh per gram, which is about a 20% increase from the NMC 622 or a roughly 50% increase from the NMC 811. 
Even though it isn't quite a huge improvement over the current generation NMC cathodes, many believe it will take over the battery market in the coming years. And more so, it is relatively affordable. The main argument for NMC811 is that it needs less cobalt, about 10%, down from 20% in NMC622 or approximately 33% from the NMC111. And that means big savings because cobalt is a very expensive component with a very questionable supply chain. You should also note that cathode materials account for about a quarter of the cell cost and a reduction in the cost of the cathode material spells a significant reduction in the overall cost of the battery. On the flip side of things, there are other battery options that could have been explored by Aptera for its solar EV. One of the most prominent of such batteries is lithium ion phosphate or LFP batteries. Basically, a lithium ion phosphate battery, also known as a lithium ferrophosphate battery, is a type of lithium ion battery that's capable of accommodating faster charging and discharging rates, comprised of lithium ion phosphate as cathode material and a graphitic carbon electrode with metallic backing as the anode. The iron and phosphate used to make the cathode are more abundant and less expensive than some of the materials used in NMC batteries, mainly cobalt. Plus, the materials in LFP batteries are far less toxic than those in NMC, making them easier to recycle at the end of their life. Generally, in choosing a battery option for solar application, like in Aptera Solar EV, there are some key parameters that must be weighted and considered before a decision is taken. Let's apply these parameters to NMC and LFP batteries and find out which one would have been actually better for the solar EV. Number 1. Performance In general, the overall performance of NMC and LFP batteries are very similar. However, LFPs are a little more efficient and can operate a little better when the state of charge is low compared to NMCs, but NMC can better withstand colder temperatures. However, such low temperatures may really not be an issue in practical SEV applications, but it's still worth mentioning. Plus, NMC batteries also have a higher energy density, meaning that their physical size will be smaller than LFP batteries of the same capacity. That means for lightweight vehicles with a smaller space provision for the battery, you'd probably want to go with the NMC over the LFP. That explains a lot, doesn't it? Number 2. Lifespan A battery loses some of its capacity to store a charge as you use it. Think about how often you need to charge your cell phone now compared to when you first bought it. Such is a similar experience in solar batteries. LFP batteries degrade more gradually than NMC batteries, therefore they can store and discharge more power over time. A cheap, poorly constructed LFP battery might not outlive a high-quality NMC battery, thus keep in mind that the battery's quality will also affect how long it lasts. However, you will likely never come across such shoddy batteries, especially in such applications as electric vehicles, but it's still worth mentioning. Number 3. Safety The safety of an LFP battery is one of its main advantages. Even at higher temperatures, lithium-ion phosphate is a more stable alloy than nickel-manganese cobalt. Additionally, LFP batteries are better able to manage high power pools, and LFP batteries are less susceptible to thermal runaway as a result. Therefore, they are less prone to catch fire than NMC batteries, to put it briefly. Not that installing an NMC battery will cause it to spontaneously ignite, but an NMC battery, however, is more likely to fail if it is subjected to excessive stress or it is handled incorrectly. And number 4. Upfront Cost NMC batteries are often a bit less expensive than LFP batteries. The main reason for this is economics of scale. Because NMC batteries are more common in the United States, their costs are a little cheaper. 
LFP batteries, on the other hand, may require more work to transport and install because they are a little bit bigger. Due to their larger size, LFP cell cabinets may also require more materials. The cost difference between NMC and LFPs is definitely more of a factor when it comes to larger scale projects like EVs and probably was a contributing factor to Aptera's choice of battery technology for its solar EV ventures. So, conclusively, with all the foregoing arguments, the LFP battery no doubt stands out for most solar ventures. And although they might have a slightly higher price tag, LFP batteries last longer, have better safety ratings, and perform just as well as NMC batteries on most metrics. NMC batteries, on the other hand, are quite cheaper and are a great battery option if you're limited on how much space you have to install a battery. That may have been the selling point for Aptera's choice of battery technology. No doubt, there are other promising battery innovations like solid-state batteries that could be a great battery alternative in solar EVs. Do let us know in the comment section below what you think of NMC versus LFP versus solid-state battery technologies and which will be most eco-friendly for solar car projects. And that's where we wrap things up for today. Our team appreciates you staying with us until this point. Our goal is to help you learn as much as possible about green energy technology, zero emission initiatives, and the future of innovations. And there is a great deal of effort that goes into bringing you entertaining updates. In the meantime, kindly return the favor and give this video a like. Subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to be the first to know when new content is added. The comments you leave on our videos are appreciated and sharing these videos indicates that you like our content and want it to reach a wider audience. Okay, see you in the next video.